What's happening, Andy? Here I am, joined by Jim Morrissey, the power of you at from Ubio. How are you today, Jim? Doing great. How are you? I am good. Uh, I'm up in Rochester, New York. It's autumn. It's beautiful here. Where are you today? I'm in Austin, Texas. All right, yeehaw! You're at headquarters, right? That's the uh, the headquarters for Ubio. And uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the the company for for uh, for those of you guys who don't know. Um, probably one of the biggest, one of the you know, definitely top five. Uh, in our industry. So give us the background. What's Who's UBO? Yeah, uh, UBO is uh, owned by Sentinel Capital Partners. Um, we have been, uh, I guess, five-year-old company now. Uh, the original founder, Jim Sheffield, uh, started the company over 20 years ago and uh, decided that the need to leverage in size uh, became very apparent the way the industry had been consolidating and all of the need for investment and and all of the things. So he made a decision, uh, you know, five plus years ago to uh, to move into more of a growth mode. And uh, it's been a terrific ride. We've done over 24 acquisitions and uh, grown from, you know, a very strong player in in texas to uh i guess we're coast to coast we got a lot of uh map to fill in uh but we are in california and uh we are big in central u.s for sure with texas and several others and uh we've actually built a very robust business on the east coast over the last three years the um Coeco and Centric acquisitions were very big for us, two wonderful companies, one being over 100 years old. And then, you know, Rick's company, which everybody knows very, very well. We were uh, very proud to uh, capture that as one of our acquisitions. Uh, Rick, I think, is the jewel on the East Coast. Uh, and, and, and we're very happy with uh that whole performance and then we uh we grabbed a couple in the northeast and so now uh we got to fill in the rest of the map well you're certainly one of the biggies i, I do i do remember that um the bassinelli acquisition was earlier this year or late last year it was um it was one of your more recent ones uh yeah that was my backyard that's where i used to sell up in the maryland dc uh market and and rick was uh more baltimore back then than than dc so i didn't run into them too much but um, certainly just a, a, a legend down there in that market. So congratulations on that one. We saw uh, Rick's last meeting. I was at his last American co-op meeting. So he's still with you. He's still uh, staying on. And that's kind of one of the hallmarks of, of the UBO uh, system is that usually it seems when you bring people on, they they contribute. They don't uh, you know take the money and run, so to speak. They stay part of the family. Is that kind of part of the mantra? How do, how do the acquisitions you know, work with UBO. What do you What do you guys tend to be looking for? Yeah, we're uh, we're very sensitive about our strategy in, in acquisitions. It's very very clear, and that is that if it's not a cultural fit, uh, we don't have any interest. And our perspective is that owners have spent you know 10, 20, 30 years investing in their people, in the community, and uh, their customers. And they don't have a desire for us to be a chop shop and run in and just chop the place up so that we can show a profit. That's not what we're doing. You know, what we want to do is buy really great companies, no fixer uppers, buy great companies, and then help the local management through best practices and synergies to be able to show where they can grow. So through growth, we've been able to make more profit but not any other way. And that's our philosophy is that maintain and retain the local management and, uh, and then build up around them. And, you know, we, we try to look at it this way. We have a menu of services that we feel is the value proposition of 2024 and beyond. And that encompasses a full suite of products from production right down to the A4 devices. It includes giving the customer exactly what they need from a uh, software perspective. And in that way, we've been able to not only expand existing customers of Rick's, who has a uh, had a great relationship with Sharp, and we still do, 
Um, but everybody knows that, you know, the production end, uh, there's other products out there that that Sharp just not, did not have. And as a matter of fact, Sharp has just aligned themselves with the Fuji product for that exact reason. So it's one of the things that we were able to quickly go into Rick's operation and, and provide uh, the Xerox product, which is Fuji, and uh, and really have an impact on their existing customers as well as be able to go after net new customers uh, you know, because they can provide the whole portfolio uh, as opposed to just the convenience machines. So that's just one of the triggers that we've been able to, you know, aid uh, some of the operations that we've acquired. Uh, we've got a lot of other things that we feel are value add. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing for us is that we don't want to break anything when we acquire so we really, really are very, very sensitive to working with the local management and providing a menu and then asking the question, we don't want you to get indigestion from this menu, just absorb it, understand it, and implement as you see fit to grow your business. Um, and that's worked out really, really well. It's accepted you know, by the local management it doesn't mean that we we haven't scaled uh, the operation. We have a very, very uh, solid foundation as a headquarters entity. We have functional leads in with, with serious credentials like Brian Murphy, who's running service. He used to run all of Rico. And John Barbieri, who's the COO, he used to run, you know, the old leasing companies and then he he was the COO at the uh, UVO company. Um, you know, we've just got some tremendous talent that we've recruited in the headquarters level. And, and basically we manage the manufacturer's relationship. We manage the leasing relationships. We manage the, um, you know, portfolios around real estate and things that they don't need to worry about in the field. But the customer and the employee are 100% owned by the field and they are on their own P&L, which does, is not gonna change. We we don't try to show them, uh, you know, cut this, do that, do this, do that. Um, we, we try to encourage growth and that's how you make more money. Awesome. That's, um, the, the, the model is, is um... It, it what strikes me is you're you're very focused. You're still very focused on you know on the hardware, on hardware, on office equipment, on you know office technology. Let's call it that. Not necessarily just copiers and printers, but everything that goes around along with that. I, we we chatted earlier, but I, you know I spent some time on your website, and it occurred to me that you know the things that you're involved with all kind of line up with our traditional heritage of office equipment, right? So document management and scanning and, and some of that other uh, workflow that, that you guys are involved in. One of the areas that you do stand out and, and you mentioned it a bit earlier, um, production print. You, you guys are known to be one of the, the more elite companies in that space. It's not easy to get into. Uh, you mentioned, you know, some dealers, even dealers you acquire may not be as strong in that, but then they quickly get brought into the fold, so to speak. Um, in this case with Rick, it was it was perfect because you mentioned Sharp, um, you know, Sharp had picked up that Fuji product. Well, you guys are are very successful with that Fuji product. It's the it's the iridescent. Um, and you're one of a small handful of dealers that actually sell a product at that level. What what um, what is it about you guys? What is it about UBO that makes you so good in that arena? You know, it's um, it, it's not easy to sell. It's it's you know, it can be challenging. The customers in that are uh, oftentimes more of an expert than the person selling the equipment. How have you guys done so well in that area? Yeah, you know, uh, looking back on the. I don't know, 25 years that I've been selling production and driving production sales, uh, it seems like a really simple formula to, if followed, will we'll be successful. Um, I, I learned the hard way uh, years ago when I had a, a uh, former Xerox pro who sold production 
uh, challenged me in one of my biggest accounts. Um, and, and I was, you know, young salesman thinking, um, you know, uh, this is my account. And he said, I'll, I'll bet you that it's not your account. I said, what do you mean? He says, I'll bet you that there's more clicks in the production house in that account than there is in all the convenience machines you've got all over those buildings. So I took him up on that. We went and visited the customer. We got the data and it was 80-20 <laughs> to my chagrin. 80% of their volume was being done on the Xerox machines in the in the data center. And I could not believe it because I had several hundred machines in the in the uh in the, the buildings. So anyway, I became a believer from that day. And you know, you think about the decline of print, the decline of print, decline of print. You're always hearing about the decline of print. It's like this this much, but in any event. Uh, you can outrun any decline you've got in convenience copiers if you're selling production. Yeah. It's been our thought process is that, you know, that's where the clicks are. That's where the expertise is. That's where the graphics, you know, the color, all of the things that are exploding right now are in the production space. And, and yeah, we sell in, in, in um, you know, print for pay and, and commercial. We, we do that. I like to look at that as like a mutual fund. You know, you got to be in it. It's not it's not something that that you necessarily like. And we don't go up, get up every morning and go implant. Uh, I mean, in the product in that side of the production, we want to be an implant. We want to be in large corporations. We want to be in places that they really need the expertise around workflow. And that's the other you know piece of the secret sauce, so to speak, is that. If you, and this is no indifference to people who sell copy machines, but when you get somebody who doesn't understand production, trying to sell production, they end up giving away fast plastic and they don't sell production. And so you have two things you need. You need pros in the job and you need analysts who are pros. You need both, not one, but two. And in also, you need the salesperson because the salesperson has a relationship in the account. The pro can't get in unless the salesperson has been dealing with them for 20 years, gets them in. So that's the combo that we have. You know, we have all three attack the accounts and it works out really well. And, you know, when you, when it comes down to it, um, you, if you don't have that expertise and this is where, you know, dealers get hung up is that they start to make the investment. They don't have the quick month, 90 days, you know, whatever it is. And they think about all the money they're spending on these high priced people. And then they, they go out and do their first five deals and they're in the toilet. And that's the end of the production thrust, right? You, you've got to have a sustainable uh, drive to be successful in it. And, and we're very, very pleased that there's not a lot of competition from our perspective. Well, you certainly have, um, you know, again, spent some time on that website and you have great brands, right? Um, you have pretty much all the leading brands in, in production. Uh, back, back to the, the Xerox uh, Iridesk, because that's one that's just not typically sold by dealers. Even dealers that get into production don't typically take that product on. What What is it about that that's... Um, that you, you've been able to, uh, you know, bring into your world? And, and what does that allow you to do with customers that, you know, maybe you couldn't do without it? First of all, it it still amazes me, the brand recognition. Uh, it, it, in, produ in the production space, it still has major cachet. And there's tons and tons and tons of Xerox customers that are out there that uh, are looking for an alternative uh, service provider. So that gives us an advantage, you know, right out of the gate. Um, so we give phenomenal service. We have made a point that, it, and, and it, to me, it's, it's, a, it's a ticket to the dance. If you don't have great service in production, you might as well just not even bother getting in it because that's what the customer expectation is. So by providing uh, the Xerox product, obviously the five color, 
you know, peace is a is a big deal and has been a big deal. Um, and we also have hired people that really understand that segment of production. And the the knowledge and expertise that they have makes it such a differentiator with, wait, I can have that brand, I can have phenomenal service, and you have this technical expertise that really understands my workflow. It makes for a perfect uh, combination. And we've been very, very successful with the product. Well, you, you guys have certainly been, um, you know, an awesome story to watch. Just sitting back in my little office here and, you know, we, we, we exist on clicks when, you know, when you guys buy someone, when anyone buys someone, um, that gets people's attention. But fortunately for us, you guys have been on a tear for the last few years. Going forward, uh, where do you see things going? You know, uh, the industry's sort of, uh, well, obviously, we've consolidated quite a bit over the last five, 10 years, right? There's We're down to maybe a thousand or less dealers. Um, a lot of that's because of companies like you. You have uh, clawed your way right up to the top. You're 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 right up there with a couple of the other big big we call mega dealers at this point, right? Um, a lot through acquisition, a lot through just your growth. Where where is UBO going to be in a few years, and where do you see the industry going? Yeah, I'm, I couldn't be more excited about the industry. I, I really mean that. I've been at it for a long time, but I see the availability to take on new clients through expertise. I, I honestly believe that what we're selling is not a commodity. It has moved away post COVID from a commodity where you know you tried very hard to get to IT, you tried very hard to get to sea level. It was very complex and difficult to convince them that they should care about NPS and print. Uh, but with the security concerns, with with uh, uh, the pressures on earnings for for headcount, and our ability to go in and talk to a customer about workflow and about how we can literally change the dynamic way that they're going to with their storage or whatever it may be, cloud faxing or whatever it is, we do get to C level. We do get to IT. And to me, that is uh, just a windfall of opportunity for really good service providers. And I don't mean just break fix. I mean, we are, you know, UBO business services. We, we are a service provider and that's what we're selling. We're not selling machines. And that's why we have multiple brands because we don't think one size fits all. We think that we want to fit the perfect opportunity for what the customer's uh, needs are. And, um, you know, so as far as acquisitions, uh, we've got an extremely robust uh, pipeline. We've been talking to a lot of people and, and, and honestly, I know that, you know, when we do end up getting in a conversation with somebody like, Oh, you know, we're getting calls every month from so-and-so or whatever. We don't, we don't call anybody. We haven't called anybody. All of our deals so far have been either people that we know, so we're in conversation with the Moretti, or a referral from somebody who knows us. And, you know, I think we're in a really good spot because of the way we've gone to market. We're kind of a hybrid from what everybody else is doing. You got one side where they, you know, rip down the sign and chop the expenses. And then you got one side that, we're not going to touch anything. We're right in the middle. Yeah, we never say we're not going to touch anything because we are. <laughs> you don't own the company anymore. And we're, we have a, a way to leverage the size, but leave the most important part in the field, which is the ability to take care of the customer. That is why dealerships have been successful. That's why large companies have not, because they they yank the decision making away from the field to be able to take care of a customer, regardless of what it is. Our field leaders could put a machine in on a Monday, take it back on a Friday. They We have no restrictions in the field as to what they do relative to their financial, their P&L. But the acquisitions, I, I, again, I couldn't be more excited because 
we're in discussions with a lot of really high quality uh, dealerships who are thinking about the same things that uh, Rick Bastinelli was thinking about and what Ray Morgan was thinking about and what Jim Sheffield was thinking about. The industry has gotten to a point that if you're not going to reinvest, you ought to be thinking about an exit because the customer has shifted from commodity to value play and they're demanding um, services that if you don't invest in the high quality people, uh, I mean, th th right now we have people that can go head to head with any IT person in any company. Those are not inexpensive resources. So for a smaller dealership, that that becomes very problematic to retain and to pay uh, those, especially if you're not um, able to capture the margin to be able to afford that. Right. But companies definitely see the value in what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue to to go to that path until we see our, you know, our growth stall or, you know, something else happen. But while we're growing organically and while we're, you know, be able to uh, help acquisitions grow, um, we're not looking to become the, the giant and we're not looking to become like we don't have any revenue target of this is what we're going to be. The only thing we have on our mind is we're going to be the best company that provides the best services in the industry. That's that's what we have our our uh, uh, target set on. Well, you certainly have set a a, a a blistering pace. Let's call it that. You've um, you know, I mean, just risen from from. Uh, ahead of the pack, uh, you're, you're you're definitely up there with uh, you know the the elite mega dealer group, and uh, it's just been a great great pleasure catching up with you and and learning a little bit more about UBO, uh, your production print, and just you know all all the stuff that you have going on. It's it's a uh, it's quite a story. You guys have built a really really amazing company over there. Well, we're looking to a strong finish in in 23, and uh, couldn't be more excited about 24 and beyond. So. Well, Thanks. keep Thanks. it up, and uh, we look forward to covering you some more. Thanks so much for spending time with us today. All right, great. You have a great day. You too. Thanks, Jim.